This is a very common problem that a lot of students make mistakes on when trying to solve for x. So this is the way that I like to approach the problem. I always like to write the term with my variable in front of my constant. Now you can see it's a little bit easier to understand what operations are being applied to the x that I need to undo. You can see my x is being multiplied by negative 2 thirds and it's being added by 4. When we have it in this original equation, a lot of students, they sometimes don't recognize that that's actually adding a 4 to your x and then that's going to be a negative 2 thirds. So I always like to rewrite it in this form first and now I can simply apply my inverse operations. First thing I need to do is subtract a 4 on both sides. Now again, remember, when you have a negative and you're subtracting 4, think about it like money. You owe me $10, you borrow 4 more, you now are going to owe me a negative 14. Now, when trying to undo multiplication by a fraction, I really don't like dividing my fractions. There's nothing wrong with it. But the main, main goal is I want you to understand, we are trying to get x equals, right? We want 1 in front of the x. So yes, you could divide by negative 2 thirds, but in my opinion, I like to think about, well, what number can I multiply by negative 2 thirds that's going to get to 1? And if you're thinking the reciprocal, then you are exactly right. Whatever you do on the left-hand side, you're going to do on the right-hand side. The cool thing about multiplying a fraction times an integer is you could always rewrite the integer over 1. Now I simply can divide this 2 into the 14, or it's easier to see that. And 14 over 2 is just going to be 7. So now I have 7 over 1 times a negative 3 over 1. Multiply straight across, you can see that's going to be 21.